keeps growing. I love it. All right. Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently, we're looking at a corona mass ejection that occurred uh, on the 21st at the end of the day during an M-class flare and followed by a C-class flare from region 32, uh, 3311. This uh, flare and activity uh, caused a corona mass ejection. As corona mass ejections are not a flare, they can be associated often with one another. And once again, <laughs> to re reference the, um, the fabulous Dr. Skov, she referenced because we're going to get two from this, it looks like. She referenced it earlier in a recent video that a chronomass ejection is a lot like a jellyfish. <laughs> I love this analogy. Uh, that these jellyfish, uh, it's a great analogy, even though I don't think she meant to do it, because a jellyfish maintains its own organism, its own organic connection. And even when they run into one another, they may deform and uh, change shape and spread out and all other kinds of things, but they still remain their own organism. A CME is very much like that. A CME will run into one another, but they maintain their own connectivity through their own electromagnetic energy and properties. So what happens is a CME will bump into one another and be more like a bumper car or jellyfish in which they can deform, speed up, slow down one another, but they still maintain their connectivity within themselves. And currently we're looking at uh, definitely one, possibly two. So once again, let's take a look at the uh, Soho imagery and see how this uh, event unfolds. And here we are. So again, as I said, beginning to view it, 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 the event occurred on the end of the 21st. We begin to start viewing the actual eruption on the 22nd with reaching the view of Soho. And you can see it stays within that uh, green circle area until right there where I stopped measuring it. But it's still going. And that event is projected currently to reach Earth around 0800 on 24 May 2023, uh, plus or minus eight hours. So between 0, 0100 and 1600 hours on the 24th of May is my projection currently. So that is something to be expecting. Uh, a little slight increase to the geomagnetic uh, energy to our magnetosphere might be good for aurora. It doesn't look largely impacting. It's not excessively fast. We're talking about 700 kilometers-ish a second. Uh, so it's not one of these more powerful, you know, 800, 900 thousand kilometers per second. But it is still an event, and it's still going to be quite beautiful, and it's coming right at the tail end of the more intense solar winds that we just sustained. If we look at uh, the space weather, where's my mouse? There you are. Uh, looking at space weather from uh, NOAA here, we can see that red band of solar winds that'll be coming in. Indy, UTC, apologies. <laughs> and uh, everything, I, all my times are in UTC, which is the same as Greenwich or uh, Zulu, depending if you're military, international, or uh, space agency. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so this event, I actually was looking for a different event that just occurred. It looks like it's not going to be impacting Earth. It's going towards the uh, southeast. But I found that this one occurred, and I had not uh, seen it yet. So, yeah, happy chance. Uh, so, yeah, once again, corona mass ejection expected to impact Earth approximately on the 24th of May, 2023, between 0 and 1600 UTC. And it is expected to... Uh, I would say probably G1 to G2 levels. I wouldn't expect much more than that. It's not traveling exceptionally fast, and it does not seem to be exceptionally powerful, but it is coming in a tail end of the reductions of the impacts of our solar wind es uh, escapades of the corona holes, what they've given us these past couple days, which did reach G2 levels. And that is the update. And cheers and science on. <laughs>